everyone, this is D-Vang. Welcome to episode 82 of The Outlaw Joseph Scott. It's entitled, Rolling on a Devil's Wheel. Rolling, rolling. Alright, enough of that. Alright, this is a town episode. Last episode, Joseph uh, uh, was in the mines. Uh, or, uh, was in town, I mean. Um, and uh, was uh, saving one of his pals from hanging. Uh, so now he's he's left that town and he's going to a new town uh, to uh, resupply. So let's see what happens in this new town. All right, folks. After saving his friend, Joseph is going to head to a nearby town. Not this one, uh, since he just killed all the corrupt marshals here in this town, and I'm sure caused some caused some issues there. So he's going to travel to another town. I think we're going to go to a medium town, so I've already set up the, the board here. Medium town means he's going to have one travel hazard. And we already finished up doing all of the uh, end of session from the last time. So um, let's see what we have. We have uh, for his one travel hazard. Uh, oh, I, except I don't believe it's supposed to be a. Let's let's do this again. Purple is the first digit. So sixty-five. Gulch ambush. So traveling through a dusty gulch, you get a bad feeling, but it's too late. Feathered arrows whiz past your head as a savage group of Black Fang tribe Indians. Descend from the cliff tops, hungry for dark stone. All right, so Joseph needs to make an agility test, five plus. Uh, or you could make a lore test, a lore five plus, uh, and potentially get a third grit. Um, his lore's uh, his lore's only three though, um, whereas his six agility. Uh, actually, he has an extra die while traveling to go visit his horse. So let's go with four. Oh, sorry, actually he has a lore of four. So five dice. Yeah, let's do a lore test so he can, he can get another grit. Five plus, he does get that. So he's going to have a third grit for in town. If, if I end up using him. So we will see. So he gets 25 experience. And he evades the worst of the attack. He's had that a couple times, I believe, that goal, that ambush. Um, but he's, he's survived. Alright, so we are... Heading to town, so we need to see if there is a specialty town. What kind of town is it? It is a 10, a river town. I don't believe we've had a river town. River town. Okay. Known for being a center of trade and commerce, a river town is a bustling hive of gamblers, merchants, and thieves. Travelers come from far and wide to find the latest in exotic goods. Always includes a street market. Always includes the gambling hall, representing the riverboat. Wealthy town hall prices in town are ten more dollars. However, so whenever a hero gains gold from gambling, selling an item, or selling a dark stone shard, they get an extra ten bucks. River travel. When finished in town, he can take a boat up river to a different area. If rolling randomly for your next mission, you can roll cho twice and choose. Each hero may also start the next adventure with one grit. One extra grit. That's awesome. I have to, I'll have to try to remember that. Uh, he'll start with that extra grit. Extra options. He can find work on the docks, making a strength test to get some extra money. Black Market Alley. Start of the town, stay roll three dice. Roll For each roll of one, two, or three, draw a gear card, four, five, or six, draw a world card, and an artifact card. These three items are available for purchase at the street market by any hero as first come, first serve. Okay. So, uh, basically, so now we have to roll, this is the start of the town stay. So we're going to roll three dice. <clears throat> one, six, six. So one gear and two artifacts are for sale. All right. So the artifacts are from, one's from the mines, and the other one is from Target Plateau. Okay, and the gear card 
So he's got journal pages. Discard to recover grit and gain 50 experience. Alright. Still not gonna still not gonna buy it. Okay. So we have the artifact from the mines, which is grabbing randomly a ring of corruption. Once per adventure, kick D3 corruption just to change any single die, just rolled into a one or a six. You can now hold one more corruption point before getting a mutation. Woo! So if it was just the ability, I wouldn't take it. Um, Joseph, I'm not a big fan of, you know, corruption and stuff like that. Uh, and taking the hits, and he can change a single die rolled into one to six, which, which could be nice. I mean, he can change, you know, his sixes give him two hits, so he could change a hit into a six or a damage. Um, but it is his last weight. He's only got one weight. But holding one more corruption point before getting a mutation. Hmm. I, Joseph will have to think about that. All right, and now we need a Targa. A Targa item. Which is the Plasma Swords. This is the lightsaber. Um, as cool as a lightsaber is. Um, Joseph uh, is not a melee character, so uh, he does not want the lightsaber. Um, so we do have to decide, in fact I'll go ahead and put that away, we need to decide at some point whether he wants to, during his town stay, if he wants to, um, if he want, if he wants to pick that up. That said, now let us finish, uh, setting up the, uh, the town here. So, we know we start with... Uh, what did it say? So we start with a street market location, and we start with a gambling hall, which is the riverboat itself. Boom. Okay. Four more locations. We've got, come on, random, we've got a church. Not that interesting. We have a saloon, again, not that interesting. We have a general store, uh-oh. And we have an Indian trading post, so no blacksmith. So no Darkstone bullets for Joseph this, this session. That's gonna, could be, could be a little rough. Um, Jeez, what is Joseph? No doctor, but that's okay because Joseph now has the rattlesnake fangs. Uh, so he does not actually need to go see the doctor. Um, what else then do we want? Um, geez, is there anything we want to do in town? Um, that is that's a good question. None of his usual, uh, usual things are there. Um, so, uh, the street market, um, nothing he really wants to buy, um, there's the red dragon injection, which could be interesting. For the next adventure, it's plus one initiative and a sphere number five plus. Anytime the hold back, the darkness roll is failed, take a corruption hit. He still gets to gets to you know roll his save on it. Um, <clears throat> hmm. And he does have the spirit. He would then have spirit armor, which would give him willpower uh, uh, saves, which would be nice. Um, and the extra initiative could could come in really handy. Street gambling again. I didn't particularly like the street gambling. Um, he could pick up a second ornate case for his other pistol. Um, he's got enough money for that. It's twelve hundred bucks. He's he's got enough for that. Um, hmm. Street market's a possibility. General store doesn't have anything. He's his side bags full up. I didn't didn't uh, use anything. Um, didn't use any of the flash powders, or didn't end up using the tequila, or the token, or the tonic. So, 
Um, <clears throat> uh, Indian Trading Post, I can do the Vision Quest. So that that is that was always an interesting thing to try. Of course, this Spirit's only a one. Um, <clears throat> We were deciding that possibly that Glyph of the Buffalo, uh, which lets him move through other models once per adventure and ignore escape tests, could be very useful for him. Uh, not much else to get at the Indian Trading Post, though. Uh, the Saloon, I mean, he could do some gambling. Uh, the Gambling Hall, which he could do some gambling. Uh, Craps and poker uh, and the devil's wheel. Uh, and he can also try to rob the gambling hall cashier. Jeez, yeah, and the street market. Um. Alright, well I think I think what we're going to do, since, since there isn't much we can do here, I think I'm going to do the devil's wheel. Um, let's, let's, let's go. I can actually, I can even do that three times. I don't think there's anything else Joseph wants to do here. Um, conceivably, go to the black market alley. Uh, go, you know, go to the street market and purchase the ring of corruption. Uh, but day one, we'll go to the gambling hall. Let's, uh, let's show you how, how the devil's wheel works. Um, and let's let's do that um, for you. Since since this, otherwise this may be a very short, uh, very short session. So uh, we are at the gambling hall. So what happens at the gambling hall? Oh, first day. Sorry, daily event card. The traveling tonic wagon. No, not going to buy those. But that's good to know. So let's. What happens at the gambling hall? Is a seven, so nothing happens. Nothing unusual happens. <clears throat> so at the gambling hall, is there anything we want to do besides, uh, you know, you, we might as well go ahead and do the poker and the craps. So we'll start with the craps. Craps is going to be easy. Uh, pay a hundred bucks, make a luck five plus test. Joseph has a four luck. Hundred bucks for every five plus roll, so he needs at least two five pluses. He does have three grit, and he gets three five pluses, uh, so that nets him 200 bucks. And I don't think I'm going to spend the grit to reroll that one die. Uh, and then uh, let's see what happens with the devil's wheel. So let me uh, let me set it up for us. All right, and here we are set up. So basically, you're going to take three. Uh, you start out by taking three random artifact cards without looking at them. Set them up in, you know, corner to corner like that. Uh, and then you take the Devil's Wheel token and place it in the center. Uh, try to get it even, fairly evenly split. Um, also, of note, if you ever misplace your Devil's Wheel token, uh, it is the same size as the Flying Frog tokens. Uh, you know, the ones, these ones that you get uh, with the corsets. And, you know, you get these kind of fine frog, cute little fine frog tokens um, in all the frog games. Same size. So if you ever end up misplacing your Devil's Wheel token, you can substitute the flying frog tokens. So a little tip there uh, if anybody's interested. So the way this works is you roll three dice into the box top. They must the dice must hit at least one of the walls. Okay? Any die that lands partially on a mine artifact card uh, is worth equal is worth a number of points equal to the number on the die. So two, three, etc. Uh, if it's entirely on the mine artifact card, okay, uh, or the devil's head token, it's worth double its points. Uh, the value rolled. Anything that isn't on anything is not worth anything. It's worth zero. Then, after the first roll, any number of the dice the player can choose can pick them up and roll them a second time. After the second roll, any number of the dice again can be picked up and rolled for a third time. So you get two kind of free re-rolls. Uh, but again, uh, 
the dice must always still bounce off at least one of the box edges. Okay. And um, when you're re-rolling, any dice that you aren't re-rolling are left where they are in the box and they can get hit by the dice you're re-rolling. So keep that in mind. Uh, and grit does not work, does not do anything. Once this rolling is complete, total the number of points for the dice in the box to see your final score. The heroes paid winnings based on how many points they earned in their final score. Uh, and that is found on the location for the gambling hall for the Devil's Wheel. So we look here, okay, 0 to 9, nothing, 10 to 12, $50, 13 to 17, 100, 250, 500, 1,000, and 5,000. In addition, anytime an artifact is collected from the Devil's Wheel, this also triggers a jackpot giving D6 times 25 to each other hero currently in the gambling hall. Well, obviously that won't apply to, to Joseph. Um, and then, once the round is complete and points have been totaled, for each die that sits at least partially on the Devil's Head token, the hero can press their luck and try for a Devil's Head jackpot. Roll the die on a 1, 2, or 3. The hero is bitten by the Devil and gains that many corruption points, ignoring willpower. On a 4, 5, or 6, the hero wins the jackpot and can take a mine artifact pointed to by that number on the token. So there's a 4 here, a 5 here, and a 6 here. So you would need to, uh, if you did have to substitute, you'd have to roll a, you know, five, just some other way to distribute, but sure. Uh, and then you get to replace it with a new artifact for the next round of rolling. And of course, obviously, as we just said, when an artifact is collected like this, you get a drag pot for the whole room, which doesn't affect anybody. All right, so it is Joseph here. So here's the first roll. Okay, so we got a four on, on that one. Okay, that was the first roll. Let's re-roll these two. Uh, try to bounce it off of this side. Okay, so those are all scoring. So if we, if we keep that, um, so this one is worth three because it's only partially on it. And that's worth eight, uh, and that's worth four. Uh, so, uh, 17, is that right? Eight, uh, and three is 11, and four, 15. Eight, three, 15. Um, so that is a good question. Uh, I do have one more rule, so let me see. A 15 get nets him 100 bucks, and it's only 25 to play. You know what? I'll re-roll this one. Oh, sorry. That's worth four points. Yeah, you know what? I'll re-roll this one. Uh, let's see if I can get a higher number uh, on one of the cards. No, I got a lower one. So uh, that subtracts two points, and it's going to be 13. It's still in the same, in the same range. So, um, you know, I might have probably wanted to roll the one that was only half on. Um, not the two that was there, because that was actually worth four, this is only worth three. Uh, but that was my two re-rolls. And that's what we get, so uh, Joseph gets a hundred bucks. And you can do this three times per visit, so. Uh, that was the first, the first one, oh, and... You know, I could have tried to get an artifact if I had kept that one too. Oh well, I didn't. I, uh, you know, first time really playing this. I played it, you know, once kind of briefly um, without having read the rules and everything. Uh, you know, just had them kind of uh, told to me um, by uh, by Jason at Flying Frog when I was there visiting for the uh, 50th episode. Uh, so uh, this is kind of sort of coming back to me, but not uh, not really, so, uh, you know, learning the intricacies and said I have not actually uh, done this. So let's, let's do a second roll here. Well, that was pretty bad. They bounced, but they didn't hit anything, so second roll. Uh, and it is a little bit difficult since uh, I can't really get a straight-on shot uh, because of the camera, but uh, 
two. Uh, that's all pretty bad. Let's let's reroll these again. Three. Wow, that moved. <laughs> that moved it uh, pretty good. <sighs> But three, that's only eight points, uh, which is no reward. Okay, so Joseph lost 25 bucks there. He's still up 75 bucks. All right, third time. Third time's the charm, right? Let's, let's try this again. I'm going to throw off the other side of the box. Oh, that's, that's, that's not bad there. Uh, let's try this again. Well, that's a partial. And his third roll, you know what? I think I'm going to re-roll that one as well. <laughs> and there goes my, <laughs> my, my dice rolling, which is why I have a box, but sometimes I still don't even get it in the box. So this counts as a zero as well. So that will get Joseph a, ten, a measly 10, 11, 12 points, which is still worth 50 bucks. So that uh, uh, that still nets him 25. Well, there you have it. Um, there was his first attempt. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. He's, he's, he's up. Uh, let's see. Uh, 75, he's up 100 bucks um, after all that. Um, so that was it for, for day one. Joseph returns to the hotel after a not horrible, uh, not horrible time at the, uh, on the riverboat. So let's see if there is an event. There is not an event. And let's see how badly Joseph's recognized. Eh, twice. Twice. So it pays, it pays 100 bucks. So the, his gambling that day did pay for uh, staying another day. Day two. All right. So the deal is, do I want this ring of corruption? Um... Is there anything worth getting rid of? Uh, I, I hate going through an adventure full up. Um, let's see, he's got the tomb chest, he's got a silver buckle, which I don't want to get rid of. Uh, he's got the healing stone, he's got his bandolier, he's got his helmet. Pistols don't count. He's got the tribal armor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's six. Um, so he's got one open slot. Nothing to get rid of. I mean, theoretically, I guess he could could get rid of the bandolier strap. With that extra reroll, but that's so nice. Um, well, let's. Well, I can't tell you unless I go to the street market. I don't know how how expensive that is. Uh, it is going to be its cost, which is four hundred plus a d six times twenty five plus another ten. Um, So, whew. it is nice though, one more corruption point before getting a mutation. Because uh, we know how much I hate getting mutations. Um, Joseph's not hurting for money. Um, he hasn't had to buy much. Uh, and his, he hasn't, you know, his his... Pain for being recognized has been moderate um, the past few times at town. Um, so he's earned enough. Uh, he has not earned much this session um, as far as uh, in town gambling and whatnot. Um, you know what? Let's, let's pick it up. 
Uh, and that way I've got it if, if I if I don't find something next, you know, that's better or, you know, because I don't really need to hold things to sell even if we're full up. So unless I find something that's better, um, you know, I have this and it gives me an extra corruption point and if I really need to, I can take the corruption hits um, to, to, to give Joseph an extra two hits, basically, um, with his gun. Uh, or change a, or, or do those extra points of damage if need be, especially since next session I won't have dark stone bullets. So let's do that. Well, day two, we're going to go to the street market. I'll go to the street market uh, with the black market and see what um, and, and pick up that ring of corruption. So, what happens at the street market on day two? A six. So nothing, nothing happens, Un uneventful. Ooh, and we do need the town card uh, to figure out the daily events, to find out what happens on the day. And it is, we found something. Buried in the sand, come take a look. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Each hero can make a lore four plus test to investigate. Uh, gain experience for every 4 plus roll. If you roll any 1s, take d6 or hits. If you roll any 6s, you also discover or found something in vial, and I can uh, potentially pick up an artifact. Alright, well, sure. Uh, and, you know, lore test gives me an extra uh, grit as well. Um, not that I need them, um, but uh, so it was lore 4. Um, I'm going to spend a grit since I have it. Let's reroll this one. There. That way, just so I don't have any ones, I don't have to take any horror hits. I did get a six, so I draw a world card because you don't get multiples; you just get one. So as long as you have at least one six, uh, and then let's see what um, what world it is. Got the four cards, and it is a, a mine artifact. Still, so I have not been able to draw that cinder um, card and pick up any of the, pick up any of those cinder artifacts. But hey, all right. So the mine artifact that they end up finding in the sand near the town is a shadow shard. Ooh, it's worth two. Well, this is a newer one. Use a grit to cancel a darkness card just drawn and place it here. Whenever the darkness moves one or more spaces on the depth track, take or hits equal to the dark number of darkness cards here. At the end of the adventure, discard any darkness cards here. So you're exchanging um, you're, you're placing a grit, you're, you're basically permanently canceling darkness cards. Um, but you're spending a grit, and you're also taking horror hits. Uh, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's worth it I'm, for for Joseph. Uh, I think that could be really good for like my Indian scout um, with his spirit armor built in uh, that he's gotten. Um, plus, he can take sanity damage to to get a grit. Um, so. You know, he could uh, use that to start canceling darkness cards. You know, that would be a great, great item for him. Uh, not so much for Joseph, especially since Joseph's already at his max. Uh, on if, uh, and I wouldn't be able to get the Ring of Corruption to do so. So there we go. Uh, there's nothing else that he wants to buy here. Uh, he doesn't need to heal anything at the bathhouse. Uh, I don't really care about the street gambling. It never worked very well. Nothing that he wants to uh, purchase, I don't think. Um, not if I, the ornate case, if I'm going to buy the ring of corruption, I don't want to spend the money on the ornate case. Uh, I'll get that later. Everything else costs um, as extra weight. I could get the red dragon injection for plus one initiative, spirit armor five plus. Um, but anytime the hold back the darkness rolls failed, take one corruption hit. Now he does take an card with the ring of corruption. He does take one more corruption point uh, before getting a mutation. 
No, I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to play going to play conservative right now. Um, so let's go with uh, simply all he wants to do is he wants to buy this ring of corruption. Uh, so it costs. Oh, it's pretty cheap. So it only costs uh, 50, uh, 50 bucks uh, plus 400, so 450. Um, and plus 10, so it's 460 plus 10 for it being a river town, so everything's more expensive. So 460 bucks. And just we'll pick up the ring of corruption. Boom. There. And that's the end of that day. Pays us 20 bucks for the hotel. Because remember, all prices are plus 10 bucks. Uh, and then, uh, is there a town event? There is not. Uh, is Joseph recognized? One more. Okay, easy enough. Day three, I think I'm going to go back to, remember, uh, there's no limit to, to number of times per day. I want to go back to the gambling hall. I want to do one more try at this devil's wheel. Um, just so that we can, we can, we can give it, you know, give it its fair share. Uh, there have been a number of times that I've been to the gambling hall and have not. Uh, have not done it. So let's do it a second time. Uh, again, it doesn't say limit once per stay uh, or anything. So Joseph will do it one more time. Uh, let's, let's use the purple dice one time. The dark stone seems seems about. Oh, maybe I should use the red cards uh, simply because they're they're. Yeah, let's use, let's use the red dice. The tentacles. Uh, you know, goes with the devil. Uh, the devil theme. All right, so twenty-five bucks. First roll. Ooh, nice. So there's a six on one of the cards. Good. Second, or so the second roll. Ooh, got a five, and that actually, I don't know if you can tell from the angle, is actually all the way on the card. All right, and the third roll. Ah, bounces far, far away. All right, so nothing on the devil, but that is a 12 and a 10. So a 22. 22 wins him $250. So a profit of, oh, I forgot. Uh, these are actually cost 35 because um, all prices in town are plus 10. So it actually cost him 35, but uh, that's still... You know what? Two hundred and fifteen uh, in profit. All right. His second set of rolls. Uh, that is hanging off. Both of those are hanging off. So they're gonna be half. So that's gonna be a three and a. Uh, doesn't say if you round up or down. I don't think. Oh, sorry. They're equal to the number die that rolled on the die. And then it's double. So that's worth a 6 and a 5. That's still 11. Uh, 12, 13. That's still not bad. I'm, gonna re I'm just going to re-roll this one. We have two shots. Nice. Okay. Well, that's a 16. Do I want to re-roll one of those to try to get it? Oh, actually, that's all the way on. That's a double. That's a 10. Uh, so, so a 10... Uh, and 11, so that's a 21. That's another 250 bucks. Sounds like a sounds like a good good plan to me. Uh, and then the third set. Remember, three times per visit. Uh, let's set that back. That's a big nothing. So the second. It's a four. It looks like that's all the way on. All right, and the third. So that's an eight. And those bounced funny. Okay. So that will that will get him nothing. So that's a loss of thirty-five. But um, overall, uh, overall, it was a pretty good. 
Uh, pretty decent. That was kind of kind of fun. Um, I imagine if you could get over a little bit more. My my table's a little high up, and of course I've got this camera here, uh, kind of in the way. If you could get some good angles uh, to be able to try to help avoid hitting your own dice. It was unfortunate that that first time around I was not paying attention <laughs> uh, and uh, re-rolled the one that was on the double token because then I could have potentially grabbed uh, one of the mine artifacts and uh, and done that. Um, let's see what we could have gotten. A scroll of flames, discard to gain a free attack, hellfire, eh. The judge, not better than what Joseph um, uses, um, really. Uh, it's a good pistol because it uses the D8 to hit and six, seven, or eight are critical hits. Um, but uh, Joseph's very focused, uh, you know. Unfortunately, the outlaw skills are very focused. Um, his combat skills are very focused on the outlaw pistols. Uh, and then a void scroll, which is another discard to do something. So, uh, a single free attack. Uh, kinda, kinda crappy, crappy items anyway. Uh, at least as far as Joseph is concerned. Well, there you have it. Um, we need to finish off today. Bring back the town. Back to the hotel. Joseph uh, needs to see if there is a town event. There is a town event because this was day three. Uh, so let's see what happens today. So the town event is a five fever. Each hero is missing spirit. spirit. Spirit six plus has to avoid the sickness. If failed, he takes a d6 plus three wounds, ignoring defense. Okay, well, Joseph does have some grit. He does have one spirit. He fails. He will use a grit to reroll. Six plus gets another one. All right, so Joseph is going to take a d6 plus three wounds. Well, only one. So he's going to take four wounds. Uh, going into the next adventure. Uh, he's leaving town. I'm not going to stay another day, so no need to check to see if he's recognized. Uh, and that is it for that is it for this week. Thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you found the Devil's Wheel uh, in gambling interesting. Um, uh, I know it wasn't a super exciting town stay. Uh, there really weren't uh, wasn't anything that Joseph felt that uh, he needed to go no go go do. Um, you know, he, gambling all. I don't particularly like robbing the cashier and none of the other places where he can rob banks um, were available. And of course, no blacksmiths and no darkstone bullets. Uh, he did pick up that ring, um, which could be interesting, could be useful. Uh, if I remember, I've got it and, and use it during the course of a mission. But there you go. So next week will be uh, the next uh, town adventure, uh, which is called Bank Robbery. Uh, so Joseph will get his fill of bank robbery next next week. Uh, I have not read the details yet, so uh, looking forward to that. Thank you all um, for watching, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.